Oh no, not the elbow and the neck. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a spot. Mm -hmm. So some of these ligaments have actually started to ossify. What does ossify mean? Become bone. There's bone. Oh, Lord. So okay. um, there's an ossification of, the, of a rubber band. Rubber band itself shouldn't have any calcium in it. Right. And has anyone told you that? No. Okay. Have they gone over your x-rays with you a little bit? Yes. Okay, and did they, did they show you any of the, I mean, I said I could, I could see some evidence of whiplash, but you said you've had three rear ends. Mm -hmm. And how many, I guess, how long ago were those first injuries or car accidents? Let's just go over those first. Um, first, I was probably about 10. Okay. And then had one about 16 and then 20. Okay, so all of those are before 26. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are all formative injuries. Mm -hmm. So back when the clay was soft, was when injuries can be the most impactful for our long-term alignment. Neck stiffness, headaches, just go over that a little bit for me. Yes, um, primarily right side, super, super, super tight, just always is, and whenever I try and get adjustments, it literally feels like my neck is going to break. I, I mean, it, it's super painful, and I can tolerate pain, but like it literally feels like it's going to break. Did they want to take any MRIs, no MRIs were wanted to take? Like a hundred years ago, I've had an MRI. I know everything's a hundred years ago. I don't exaggerate at all, but, <laughs> um, but I'm not exaggerating about my issues. Um, okay. But yeah, it's been a long time since I've had an MRI. Okay, lumbar x-ray, there's evidence of swollen discs, but again, I need an MRI to see the disc. You can see the space, mm -hmm. but when a disc actually gets swollen before it ruptures, it'll actually make the disc height look really good mm -hmm. before it becomes really bad. Okay. And so, you know, you have neuropathy going down your leg, mm -hmm. which both legs or just at, at times both, but primarily it seems to be more consistent on the left. Okay. Um, yeah, and like it just it kind of aches. It's, I don't think it's sciatica. I've never had that before, but okay. my understanding is that's like shooting pain. I don't have that. It's just like an ache. Tooth achy pain? Yes. I got you. It depends on how you're hitting the nerve. If you okay. hit the nerve quickly, mm -hmm. it'll be shooting. Okay. If you just kind of squeeze the nerve, it's like hitting your funny bone. Mm -hmm. If you hit it quickly, you get a zap. Mm -hmm. But if you just kind of, you know, irritate it, it'll give you just symptoms along okay. that area. Uh, but it's definitely the sciatic nerve that's being hit. Okay. And that would be again an indicator to get an MRI of the okay. MRI of the lower back, and that would clear up any confusion. And here's your injury, versus what I can see on the X-ray. Again, we're kind of guessing a little bit about where exactly the injury is. We know based on mechanics in mm -hmm. terms of, and also from surgeons, where all surgery happens. Mm -hmm. So let me back up a little bit. There are 24, 24 vertebrae in here. Mm -hmm. Five have all surgery. So even though this model has a disc bulge herniation here at L3, so this is L5 is the last guy, L4, lumbar three, these last two guys encompass about 99% of back surgery in terms of what the surgeons here in Sarasota operate on. It's these two guys here, mm -hmm. and then the last three guys in the neck. Okay. So those are the, what do we say, usual suspects. <laughs> those are the ones that are uh, causing all the problems. And our alignment and mobility interplay with the reason for why that happens. Your lumbar, for instance, should have a curve in it. Mm -hmm. And because you're you know, sitting a lot and working a lot driving, that curve goes straight and all the weight like a ladder ends up going to the last two. The sciatic nerve is made up of five nerve roots, three sacral and two lumbar come together. Our powers combined. <laughs> I'm, you know, they all come together as one large nerve, about as big as your thumb, and that goes down through your glute, down your legs, supplies about 75% of your legs. So everything below the knee, mm -hmm. uh, back of the thigh, outside of the thigh is all sciatica. Okay. So that, that region is controlled by that one nerve the sacral foramen are fused. They don't change in size based on mechanics. The, the lumbar divisions can change based on the height of that disc and also alignment. So when I bend forward, the hole gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And so you can compensate, you can avoid, you can tilt. So even when you tilt the spine, the holes on the opposite side get bigger. Mm -hmm. You see that, mm -hmm. right? And so many times your body will, if you're pinching something over here, mm -hmm. There we go. Right. <laughs> it's all better, Doc. I feel fine. Right. Right. And, and your body's changed its alignment because these foramen, or these holes, change in size based on if we bend forward, mm -hmm. which is also another common, yes. you know, everybody elderly typically goes, right. hunches forward. The disc is non-sensitive 
And the more we round forward, the faster we're actually causing it to herniate and bulge, which becomes a, a dead end road. You know, this is where a lot of the basis for a lot of therapy, grab your knees, pull your knees to your chest, mm -hmm. and things that temporarily may relieve symptoms, but long term, we're not aiming the patient back to the right alignment, which is this curve in the spine where you can see the, the disc isn't very pressurized. Right. Versus when there's when you're bent forward, there's a lot of pressure on that disc. This is a piece of tread that has a certain shelf life to it. There's only so many, like a tire on a car, there's only so many revolutions before it can wear out. Um, and we want the weight, therefore, on the joints, which are these little knuckles back here. They, they replace, mm -hmm. and so I'm not too worried about the joints. The disc doesn't replace like enamel on your teeth. And so long term, we want to have the right alignment. And that's why I was asking you earlier, is anybody do anything to change the alignment because if your head's forward, all the stress goes to the lower neck. And then we have three injuries in your formative years that now your body's saying, I'm gonna lock that down. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty with that is whatever injuries happened and whatever members of your team that you lost, every member that you lose now makes another person do extra. Mm -hmm. Right. And now, so we have the damaged areas, the parts that I, I wanna show you in the x-ray in a second that I can tell are older than you are, and then you have the areas that are injured but haven't worked, that have actually stayed young, that don't want to be adjusted. And that's you know, okay. not going to be fun to go in there, but you're not going to hurt them. It's just going to hurt to get something frozen moving. And we'll, I'll show you the difference between the upper neck mm -hmm. and you know, lower neck and where exactly, you know, hopefully the chiropractors are adjusting up here and leaving the lower neck alone. And that my dad was actually injured by guys that kept on trying to adjust him where he was injured. And mm -hmm. As a patient, it's like, I don't know, like the guy laid me on my back and he tried to turn my neck. Right. But I'll, I'll try to show you the difference between where we want to get the neck moving. So your, your, your skull sits on this atlas, which sits on this pin, and our head turns primarily up here. Okay. Meaning that you actually shouldn't move it all down here with this as your main engine. This, these guys actually don't turn that much down here while this guy at the top mm -hmm. does a lot and so primarily a lot of my care is focused on restoring the function of this let me pull up that x-ray make more sense there's no bone spurring up here these are normal looking mm -hmm. heights um, and then as you get down to your lower neck for instance that little piece of white right there That's what we call a syndesma fight or bone spur okay. the evidence of the car accidents I was talking about was this bone right here actually come down and whack that it's hard to you know, okay. that's actually in a whiplash motion. Right. Okay. The front part of the vertebrae actually, <laughs> actually smacked that in a very fast motion. Mm -hmm. And there's like a little crater there. I know this is the best. I see it. I mean, I see what you're saying. There's a, yeah. right there, there's a little yeah. crater from that actually coming down and whacking that. That's why before I came in here, I was like, what whiplash did you have? <laughs> yeah. That, these have smacked together. That should never, that can't ever happen in regular life. Yeah. Would never well, that was probably when I was hit from behind and then it knocked me into a car in front of me. So I, I got it like Great. double whammy. Double I know whammy. that this was where the injury happened because this is where the damage is. And I know this part of your neck wasn't participating because I don't see any injury. Okay. See how nice and smooth and mm -hmm. there's no, mm -hmm. you're saying, and only down here at the bottom, like that's that's been smacked by that. That little flat part mm -hmm. there has mm -hmm. been so there's evidence of whiplash down here. So the alignment that you were in when you received these forces determined where the force went. Let me show you. This is now there's some rotation going on here. Again, this is a lot of this, I wouldn't even call this scoliosis. This I'm going to refer to Ed. I have pain down with the left leg. And this is actually, I'm gonna put any markers on this, but I'm pretty sure because I looked at the one on the top, your heart's on the left, and they this is flipped. So okay. what's on the left here is on the right. They should they should have put a marker on here to let us know. Um, but my point is that you're this is actually going the opposite way. Mm -hmm. um, and because you have left leg pain, you want to stand on your right side. You're watching mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is see what we got. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is busted. Right because <laughs> because it, well yeah ah right right so that's because it's actually that's what's popping this out to the right even on the model this is out to the left it's, that's what's making this round mm -hmm. to the right does that make sense yes because this is uh because you have pain on one side and then that's what causes all this tilting again like i showed you on that model when you tilt the holes get changed in size so i would call this more of a functional misalignment uh -huh. so some of these ligaments 
have actually started to ossify. Does that make sense? Right here, there's, there, this is not, there's not any bone in here. There's not supposed right. to be any bone in here. This is the soft tissue mm -hmm. between your atlas and your axis. Okay. This is evidence of how stiff your upper neck is. The only reason the... So a rubber band is starting to ossify. What does ossify mean? Become bone. There's bone. Oh, Lord. So, okay. so it's like your muscles having bone in it now. Mm -hmm. The lack of it moving is what allows that to infiltrate that tissue. Okay. This needs, so getting that moving is difficult because an area that's not supposed to have bone now has bone in it. Mm -hmm. And all the more reason we need to, like there's evidence that there's extra bone. These are ligaments, like I heard there's, 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 there's no bone in here. Right there, that's ligament that's got bone in it. You know, there's, there's actual ossification of your soft tissue because it's not moving properly. There's a ligament that's starting to ossify even between your atlas and your occiput. Mm -hmm. So it just shows me how, how stiff it's been for so long. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate because this is supposed to be your main engine. So your main engine is clogged. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to spend most of our visit, you know, trying to unlock so she that. she was concerned that much? Yeah. You send her for an MRI. Yeah. You're saying that takes all the guesswork out. We see exactly... Right. They're okay. 200 bucks. They're 200 dollars. Yeah, and, and, maybe, and that's good to know because, I, I mean, I can't imagine that she wouldn't if I it wouldn't were, even, you know, something. 1895 amazing. stuff versus 1970 stuff. Yeah. At least we're closer to the present day. Right. We should be looking at, the MRI would show you, would take all guesswork out. It'll tell us exactly what's going on in there, exactly mm -hmm. how much bone spurring. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at shadows, trying to shine a flashlight at this and then look at the wall. Right. You know, I, I, I hate even, they, they, they made a study x-ray so much in school and I've just, yeah. <laughs> can we can we can we move on? It's the lack of it moving that caused it to form all that ossification in the soft tissue to begin with. Right. right let me start with this. Deep breath in. Head back one. Let all the air out. Good. Deep breath in for me. I got you. Exhale. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Deep breath in. All right. Exhale. Go ahead. Stay there for me. Okay. Let me work too. So that area being tight mm -hmm. contributes to your lower back being overstressed. All right, deep breath in for me. Exhale, twist. There we go. Uh -huh. Other side for me, other side, good. Exhale, there we go. Okay, let's right, so go face up for me. Yeah, yeah we're gonna loosen up your hips. I'm just gonna take a little bit of cream. Okay. We'll start rubbing here. Turn your head left for me a little bit, there we go. Okay, yeah. We're going to spend some time on that guy. Let me see the left. The left used to be pretty supple. I mean, I've just yeah. recently started big feeling difference. some stuff, you know. Yeah, I big, used to really didn't feel anything. Big difference, though. I mean, yeah. you, don't, you don't have the Frankenstein bolt. So your neck likes to tilt left. See mm -hmm. how easily, mm -hmm. almost effortlessly, her mm -hmm. neck tilts left. But it pulls on the right. That's right. Yeah. And this is where we're going to spend. Look at this knot right here. Hello. And... That's probably what happened. You had an injury here, and then your head tilted left to get away from it. Mm. And that allowed this to fill up with all that bone and calcium and crystals because this area locked down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now your left side is compensating and now overstressing. But we got to go back to the original, you know, like I said, 40 years ago, <clears throat> you injured multiple times these upper neck, and, and now it's mm -hmm. left your team. And Did they even have cars 40 years ago? <laughs> Just seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> they probably. did, because that's what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that, those were probably just lap belts, right? There were no shoulder straps, right? They I don't remember, honestly. Because I've had people, you know, like I said, when, when they have childhood injuries, mm -hmm. you know, they just had the lap belt. Right. And... <clears throat> so then you had a larger lumbar injury because you folded around the lap belt. Mm -hmm. And then with the invention of the shoulder strap, we have almost all exclusively neck injury now because our chest isn't able to participate in mm -hmm. the <clears throat> car accident. But Well, so in my good. last one, that was the worst one. Yeah, I got it from behind in uh -huh. and in front. I was pregnant, so I oh. they couldn't do x-rays. Right. So it was chiropractor did traction and stuff and he got me uh -huh. functioning but like it's never been right. I've always had, had bad headaches. Yeah. 
don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. There's right there. Yeah, you got it. just glued together up here. Mm -hmm. You gotta unglue. But this is a this is a kind of a perfect case of what needs enzymes. You need these called proteolytic enzymes to break down the scar tissue that's forming in the soft tissue, the actual you know bone forming that needs to be that doesn't belong there. We're real gentle, we'll see if we can loosen this up a little bit. I'm just gonna see. Okay. Keep that shoulder down as best you can, I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I gotcha. Keep that shoulder down, yeah, there we go. Uh -huh. So okay. Mm -hmm. Relax this left side a little bit right there. All right, that's mm -hmm. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go oh, gentle. I got you. See this side. Uh -huh. I got you. Uh -huh. It's okay. Relax this side. Chin up for me a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got work to do on this right. Yeah. This has to be. It's, it's ultimately, and we got to stop sleeping on your left side. We have to start trying to actually tilt this to the right. And then when we're on the denaroll in a minute, we're going to have her back and to the right is the way we're going to have her trying to stretch. So when we're stretching, we'll have you back with a little bit of right rotation to work that right upper knot. Okay. But right now there's not any proteolytic enzyme in your body, so we it's like we need some lubricant, some oil in there that I can drive into the tissue to really, you know, make this more effective. She needs the soft tissue work coupled with enzyme in her blood in her bloodstream. There we go. Ultimately frozen upper neck. Probably one of the you know stiffest that I've seen on video. At least you know this frozen upper neck that needs to be alleviated. I keep working the hinge, it's like a hinge. You gotta you know, press on it and then tilt and rotate. And... Too much, okay? No, I'm okay. okay. And, the, and the real reason this needs to be done is really for the sake of your arms, you know, and headaches. I mean, mm -hmm. the headaches are tied with the with the inflammation that's trapped in there because the area is frozen it doesn't clean itself so then the ability for that area to become filled up with lactic acid is high and then that's what irritates the suboccipital nerves and gives you headaches and but in terms of neuropathy and nerve injury it would be the lower neck where the bone spurring is happening that affects your shoulder your arms that would be the effect of not getting this area moving properly it's it's for the it's for the salvation of your lower neck. Yeah. <laughs> your upper neck needs to be working for the lower neck to not be damaged. See the sides. This is this is how it's supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. Over here, your neck just effortlessly goes. It just feels puffy. All feels you know, swollen. <laughs> you know, frozen. My dad would call it stuck in the mud, like a car. Mm -hmm. So you have to like squeeze the fluid out and then adjust it. And then you go deeper, squeeze another layer of fluid out. And then at some point it'll start to, you know, click, let's say, for you. But the main thing is that it feels, we, we want it to feel soft. Whether, whether we get to the day where it actually clicks again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you definitely can get to a day where it feels soft. Okay. And that, you know, that level of expectation is where I... You know, I think we, we definitely can expect it to feel soft one day. Whether or not we actually get audible like the left side of your neck might not be, you know, based on the amount of ossification in there. I don't know, I don't know the answer. It would kind of be like a trial and error, seeing how much you how soft we can get it to feel. It's already feeling softer. It's already becoming more and more supple as I hold you over here. And then and then trying to not allow it to fill up so much. So the every time we tuck our chin down, every time we you know, spend a lot of period of time looking down, that makes this stiffer more, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's mainly because you like tilting your head left. Remember how you stand on your right leg? Right. That creates a left head tilt. And so it's part of it standing on your left side. But I don't stand on the left side because my left lower. <laughs> so, yeah. so that, so even, even your lower back, 
you know, nerve pressure causes you to tilt your head, which is then feeding this narrative. So getting, which in a second, we're going to work on that middle back, try to take some stress off your lower back so you can stand on your left leg, and that'll stop making you tilt your head left, okay. get your head tilted to the right, so they're all connected together as a team. Yeah, it's just kind of all kind of mm-hmm. gotten a lot worse in the last six months or so, I'd say, mm-hmm. you know, including, mm-hmm. I've never used to have lower back pain, but I've started just depending on, mm-hmm. oftentimes it's after I have an adjustment, and I know things tend to shift around. Well, nobody, I'll, I'll show you, like, no, so my, when I adjusted your back, I adjusted the middle. Right. So nobody touches your lower back. Even well, I don't, I don't think they have been. Good. They've been trying to do the sacrum. Okay, like, I, like we But, did. like, okay. that doesn't hardly move. I'm just going to show you the difference. Either. So even for your neck, notice no, nobody pushes into your lower neck. Okay. See how we're up here, mm-hmm. off your occiput. We're trying to adjust the upper neck. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just to, you know, nobody should be, does that make sense, pushing mm-hmm. into your lower neck where the bone spurs are and where the injuries are. Okay. So this would be a lower neck adjustment. Mm-hmm. This would be an upper neck, upper, lower. And same thing with for the lower back. Obviously, we want to work on the areas that are not injured, the frozen areas, and move the stress off. Just a little softer over here, and then oh my goodness! Wow, like just gotta loosen up all of this. The bra participates in encouraging rigidity in here. The ribs, mm-hmm. you know, so many things make it easy for our thoracic cage to be mechanically stiff, and then just leave the lumbar to do everything. But yeah, this is you need you, you know time up here. Right there. I'm going too hard, please let me know. I'm going to keep going deeper. Okay. Okay, all right. I think I can handle it. Okay, all right. This is where we're going to try to get the dent roll and dent rollers to target, okay. kind of like a retainer to target these areas to prevent you from backsliding. You know, so we mm-hmm. use the adjustment and the massage and the gua sha as a way to soften, and then we use the re- the retainers, the dent rolls, the rollers as you know ways of like holding you where you are, so that the next time you're worked on, we can keep progressing you farther. Okay. Otherwise, you just do this two steps forward, two steps back kind of thing. Yeah. If we don't use any stretching, I don't think we can really progress this case. You need you need to be held, and then you know every visit then can be used as a ladder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I will do it. Yep, 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 yep. Here we go. I'll show you. Tight, but not not nearly as, we'll say, you know, Belgian road. <laughs> not as bumpy over here. So is the right side just 
because pesticide manek is and just an extension there? Right, it ultimately is a reflection, right? It ultimately, usually, and I would, I would argue that the neck causes the lower back, you know, chicken and the egg kind of mm -hmm. idea. You know, I believe the, the neck injuries then facilitated and caused tilting that then made your lower back get abused and that created a favoritism of standing on your right hip and, you know, but it, it dominoes down from the top down. Mm -hmm. Right lock, left abuse. Mm -hmm. This being abused causes your left leg symptoms, okay. but then you favor to stand on this. Mm -hmm. So right middle tension causes le right lower tension, which causes left lower abuse. Mm -hmm. Did your neck move like you've been going to chiropractor for years, right? Like did it move better when you were younger or do you remember? I don't really remember. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't remember mm -hmm. yeah. gotcha. about the neck. I just know it's probably been 20 years ago when mm -hmm. it started feeling like it was going to break mm -hmm. when they tried to adjust it. Mm -hmm. It's probably been frozen for a good 20 years. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, some would act you know, when I'd be like, ah, I got you. they'd act like, you know, I, I felt, was the problem. I felt, <laughs> you know, like, well, like felt, you're, felt, you're afraid for us to adjust, and it's like, no, what I you felt, don't understand, it's killing me. Right. You know, literally. I felt, I felt next even tighter than that. There's, there's some people's necks come in my office that are totally frozen. I can't, I can't even, I mean, less range of motion than you. Sorry. Okay. You don't get my word of most Well, no, that's, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping the end of this story no, is there's hope. No, there's no. I, I have people that are more frozen that, we, that we've sifted through. Um, it's tight. I mean, at least you have one side of your neck moving. I've had people come in both sides equally frozen. That bone that's in the soft tissue is moving, mm. right? There's, there's bone in the ligaments. Um, there's an ossification of a, of a rubber band. Rubber band itself shouldn't have any calcium in it. Right. And Has anyone told you that? No. Okay. This, this right side needs hours. It just needs, you have to sit here and scrub. It's like a rust that forms. And it just, it can all be, we can make this supple. I've seen it become supple 100%. Now, sometimes, like I said, some people, 50% of the time it, it'll start to click. 50% of the time it just, you know, doesn't click, but it'll, it'll move. But sometimes you're not going to get that audible, right. you know. So I wouldn't. Don't fall prey to that. Don't fall okay. prey to. Well, but even if I don't hear mm -hmm. it, like, shouldn't I feel it move or not? You will. You will. But you'll. It'll. It'll feel supple. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. It'll feel soft. It won't feel like it's breaking. Right. That will go away. Okay. But whether or not you get an audible might not be something we can right. attain. But you'll feel like it's 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 bending. Correct. I'll show you the neck dentural. At the very least, that's that's going to be your first way of. Like I said, preventing backsliding. You know, we have to have something as like a foothold that can be used to prevent the problem from growing in between visits. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're really not, we're not going to get up this ladder if we keep taking a step up the staircase and then you take a step back down. And then, right. you know, that's, that's really the, the, the roller's the first step of introducing that to your back. And then there's one for the neck. And uh, I'm gonna, I would start with the roller for her back. And then with the, maybe the neck dental roll. Was it your dad driving? Who was driving? No, my, the first one when I was like 10, my sister was driving. And it, we were in Georgia, and anyway, it, it was icy roads. Gotcha. So we kind of hit a tree. Gotcha. Um, the next one, my boyfriend and I had been on a date, and we were um, sitting in the turn lane, and a van was just going like 65 miles an hour. Oh just slammed into us did wow. never yeah he was drunk out of his mind so wow. literally hit his tongue off wow. all the things so that did the neck and then my ankles both ankles because the front seat kind of came in on the people in the if anybody was in the back seat they'd be dead wow. so so that happened and then the other one i was driving and was in a turn lane waiting and same thing got just you know, no brakes or anything. Just wow. got me in the back and knocked me into somebody oncoming. Gotcha. Wow.
Oh no, not the elbow on the neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why I didn't wear mascara, because mm -hmm. I'm be waking up or getting up looking like a raccoon. Mm -hmm. That's the spot. Mm -hmm. Seems like this left leg, like I noticed it hurting more. Mm -hmm. I've been waking up lately mm -hmm. with it, just like screaming at me. Again, this is an MRI. It needs to be, you know, like I said, there, there's disc injury. You know, okay. the lower back because of how tight this is, uh -huh. especially this right middle. Uh -huh. This is aging, and that's what's then causing, you know, the pressure on the nerve that goes down your left leg. But the right middle is your cause. Uh -huh. And then when we're showing you in a second, when we're stretching, we'll see if we can get some pressure. Love we'll your knees rotate to the right, and that's where she's going to push into this right side. And that'll open up the left side and give you some relief. So there's things you can do at home okay. to be used in those type of situations where you're in pain uh -huh. and how to, how to divert the stress off them. Look at that. That's sore right there. Mm -hmm. well, this, is, yeah. this is what we're trying to adjust on your side. This joint yeah. is your sacroiliac joint. and. Sitting locks this joint. Giving birth to babies locks this joint. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you have kids? Done both. Yeah, mm -hmm. got two boys. Two boys, so you. They've grown. The but process of getting a baby through tears up this joint. And they were large. That's right. So large children. At postpartum, these these joints quit on you, and that's another piece mm -hmm. of the puzzle. I would not advise any more X-rays. <laughs> okay. We go get an MRI, and then that clears up all doubt. Okay. Um, they're two hundred dollars. Ideally, they're if you were in Sarasota, there's a place we can do it seated, which uh -huh. is which is ideal because we call them stress views, uh -huh. right? So it's a little silly to take a picture of a spine with no gravity because it's a not stress view, uh -huh. right? Well, I think we have one. If they have a seated one, it's even mm -hmm. better. I think so. That'd be great. It's a lumbar and a cervical seated. Yeah, right there. That's that's just. Whew. It just needs hours. I'm trying to distract you while I just got to keep making passes on that right. Well, so for a massage therapist, that's where I need to tell them that. I would say, I would almost, if you were, if you're in Sarasota, I'd almost, it's, it's at least two to one. So if we spend 10 minutes here, we spend five minutes here. Okay. You're saying you should see a predominance of time being okay. spent on the right side of your neck okay. and the right middle part of your back should be at least two to one. Now, once it levels out, you can go one to one right. with it. But right now, see what'll happen is the side that's loose will get looser faster than the side that's stiff. So you actually increase the imbalance and disparity. Well, and you know, I tell people, I'm like, I feel it on the right. Like that's where I feel locked up and that's what hurts me, mm -hmm. you know, the most. And then I've had massage therapists tell me that I felt tighter on the left. And they're working on the left, and I'm like, okay, yeah. no, it's that makes sense. It's it's pretty obvious, right yeah. here, her your right middle, from from here to here on the right, and that right knot Frankenstein bolt um, need to be 
Okay. Like I said, it'll, I'm making up numbers here. It'll take 20 hours to get the right side to loosen up, but you can get the left side loosened up in three hours. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll increase the contrast between the left and right areas if you just work on it evenly. Okay. It needs to be, okay. Ed, you, you rub the right side of my back tr double or triple the time that you spent on the left, and the answer is correct because this side needs yeah. uh, to catch up. And then once the once the drawer is level, then we can start working on both sides evenly. Where your skin folds, like let your head go back a little bit. Where her skin folds is where all the bending's happening. And this is why we're trying to let your chin go down a little bit. We're trying to make this upper neck now do the bending. Now, does doing that help with the muscle? I this mean, is help? all for muscle. Yeah, this okay. is mainly for the soft tissue and muscle. Okay. Um, it's I think of it like a the elbow and the thumb are the jackhammer. The adjustments the jackhammer that breaks up the cement into little pieces that, and can be swept away by the gua sha. Mm -hmm. You know, the gua sha isn't really a tool for breaking down a wall, <laughs> right? It can, it can, it's just a way to pick up the pieces that have already been broken loose. Okay. And then you have to do another round of adjustments and deep tissue work to make the spine supple. And then the stretching prevents more cement from being put down and filling up all the places that you just chipped away at. Right, so you don't just get a rebuild up again. Do you do the fascia blasting still? Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I would try to work this. Keep. I, mean, I think she's done a pretty good job. So I don't have big marks here. She's already got. You've already got the soft tissue. At least the the surface things have already been cleaned. Okay. But the deep layer is really what's left. Mm -hmm. So push your feet and move that. That makes sense. You like move, this. Correct. Okay. So now you move one inch down your back. Okay. And eventually this roller is going to be push in here. Okay. Right, so your range is from, you know, from here mm -hmm. to here. Okay. So you're every one minute, you're moving one minute per inch. Okay. Put the feet together, knees together. Now bring your knees gently left. Come on, there you go. That's gonna be, this, would, this shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, that's not. Now the knees to the right's gonna be, uh -huh, no. <laughs> a little harder. So knees right, now we're gonna tackle that knot on the right. Here that pulled on the left, mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm, normal? Mm -hmm. It just kind of freaks me out, like I don't want to spasm not, you're not gonna or something. You're not going to hurt anything, I promise you. Okay. You're not going to hurt anything, but it's going to hurt, but it's not. You, this is the side you got to work on. That's the side that's going to be a little more resistant, yeah. especially as we go lower. Yeah. That's going to be harder. So I'd almost do like two times to the right. Does that make sense for every time you go left? I almost. Okay. Now the idea is now to push with your feet and move upwards an inch. Come on. There we go. I feel like I'm not rolling on the back, am I? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Yeah, you you you, okay. you, you end oh, up a little bit. Gosh. I know. Yeah. That hurts. Too much. Too much. That's so Come on. Okay. Yeah, it's it's the goal. The goal is to go to the edge and back off. So if it's too much, then we okay. have to back off a little bit. Okay. But this is this distance has to be this gap has to be bridged. Um, if we don't do this care, then all of that can't work. Okay. It won't work because this is really where everything I do on the table is to prep you for this. So okay, that you so can when I do this, I feel like this is cramping up. I wouldn't go so far, so don't go okay. so far. Like with it here, but Correct. before it did it. But. Let's go to the right, go to the right. I, w I mainly want you going this way anyway. I want you working that right knot. Now this should give you relief. When you have pain going down your left leg, uh -huh. Going knees to the right will open up the holes on the left side. Okay. And that should give you some relief when you're feeling, you know, achiness or symptoms down your leg. Another thing you can do is when you bring your knees back up, you can take your hands and, you know, I know, go easy, easy. Put them on your thigh and you push. Now you can, it's got to be a little bit lower in your groin area, but get the idea? Mm -hmm. You want to push and try to traction. I know it's hard. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a journey. I would do this on the bed, perhaps. Okay. You know, so you do this on the bed; it'll be softer. Okay. But you're still going to want some. You know, I have about. I had a guy the other day who, I don't know, his mid seventies golfer. He probably had, I don't know, nine inches of books behind his head. Oh wow! After about a month, he was at four inches. After about two more months, he was at two inches. Yeah. You understand? Right. And I think it was after around three to six months, something like that. He was down to almost. He could put his head on the ground. That's you know, awesome. that's yeah. doing it every day. Mm -hmm. That's but that's with care. You know, that's my point. That's that's the progression you should, and that's a mid seventy year old guy. You understand? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you should see that type of progression mm -hmm. with the stretching, doing it every day. As long as you're getting to twenty minutes, 
you're going to progress. You know, maybe a device that looks like my thumb, mm -hmm. and now this would work on that right side of your neck. Okay. Lift up a little, and then head back for me. So the idea is that you take your hand, and you place it on your forehead, and you press, and then you do a little bit of right rotation. It makes sense to mm -hmm. work. So I'm trying to get that spot, right? Correct, yes ma'am. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're trying to work like my elbow was on that spot, mm -hmm. and like my thumb was on that spot, that mm -hmm. Frankenstein bolt. This is the best we have. Okay. It isn't me. If it was me, I would have a job. But my point is that this is the closest we have to emulating thumb okay. pressure. And you... Because I feel like I, it could even go down a little more. To, I want it, But I don't... I want it pretty high on that knot. I okay. Want it right on that. Maybe a little bit. There we go. Yeah, like right there. Okay. To get off this, what you'll do is go ahead and use one hand to keep your head straight. Oh. Use one hand to gently lift your head. So oh. lift your head up, up. Then use the other hand to grab the device. Oh. Grab the device out and then lay your head back down. That's how you get off that. Okay. So one hand without using your neck muscles, ideally if you can. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll lift your head passively, grab the device, lay your head back down, and then it's gonna feel warm, mm -hmm. a little tingly. That's again the disparity between where your neck wants to be and where your neck is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to the cervical lordosis is paramount. We have to aim your spine back to that curved position. We have to unlock your spine, make it soft like clay or metal so that Evie can do it. Mm. It can't do it. It won't do it if right. your neck is stiff. I'm glad you felt something because generally some people that are so stiff don't feel anything. So the fact mm -hmm. that you're feeling something is mm -hmm. a good sign to me okay. that it's working. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I know, it's just, it, it's just, it's frozen. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. And when you feel that, it's right up there, right over that spot, right? It's mm -hmm. right in here. Well, when, do you, feel when you try and adjust it, I feel it like all down here. Oh, that mm -hmm. whole thing whole feels area. like it's going to break. Yeah. I got you, all up here. Yeah, uh -huh. all, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, it's just, this area hasn't moved in a long time, and, mm -hmm. it, and it actually, the soft tissue adhesions actually, your, your sensation isn't inaccurate. <laughs> There's glue in the soft tissue in here that needs to be, you know, Dissolved. slowly chipped away at. Right. I mean, it is. There's, there's crystals in the, in the soft tissue in yeah. here. All right, go ahead and tilt your head to the right a little bit. Go. go ahead and tilt your head right. There we go, a little bit. It's <laughs> interesting. Different. <laughs> Weird. All right. I go ahead and tilt your head left. About that. I go ahead and tilt your head left. Okay. okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's gonna look like she's laying on it. I see. Like it, like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. With this part. Got it. Yeah. Laying. And again, you're going to somewhere between these two. I don't want it that low. Mm -hmm. I want it kind of upper neck, and then you're going to take your hand and press. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get that curve. It goes military, like you're actually mm -hmm. looking like that. We want it to be more arched. Right. Okay. And then that's, you see the picture, there's the, they actually take x-rays people on these devices, mm -hmm. and that's the curve that your neck, it's just a portable thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's rigid enough to, you know, start molding that mm -hmm. curve in your neck. So we've got to get you back to, Curved. Okay.